Hi everyone. Today I'm going to take you to an AI photo shoot with me. Have you ever seen those AI generated photos on social media of your friends? Those usually look AI ish but good enough for a smile. However, today I will be talking about a professional photo shoot of yourself that can be used at scale as many times as you want. You choose a location, a setup, lighting, inventory, etc. Or if you do not know what to choose from, AI will do this for you. In this video, I'm revealing how we are going to take the leading AI image generation model of Lux One Dev and going to fine tune that model on our own photos so that the model will always consistently generate a photo of ourselves in a provided setup. Stay tuned because I'll also share how you can make it in Slack so that you can get tens of images per request with no code. Let's jump in. So in order to make a photo shoot, we will need to train our own model called Flux One Dev on our own photos. So in order to do that, we'll need to access the model and the model is actually available on a service called fall.ai. So once you go to fall.ai, you will need to sign up. And if you sign up, you can go and log in. The only thing is that you will need to sign in with your GitHub account. If you don't have one, you will need to create one and then you sign in with your GitHub account. Once you're in, you will go to Explore tab, and this is basically an environment with many different models there. You can you know, do the music, you can do the video, or you can do photos. So in our case, we are interested in Flux Laura Portrait Trainer. And actually, if we click here to the filter training, we'll find three different models. So that was the first model, Flux Laura Pass Training, that was previously used by many other people, and they were showing how you can train a model on your own photos using this model. But recently there is this Flux Laura Portrait Training model came out, which makes it in my case even more better. So I like it much more and that's why I will be showing how you can use this model, which is kind of uh, another one to actually make photos of yourself. So in order to train the model on your photos, logically speaking, you would need photos of yourself and you will need to prepare those photos in advance before actually uploading them here. So the key insights about the photos are the following. So the variability is the key. You shouldn't be uploading the same images of yourself in one pose in one environment. There should be different images in different poses, different environments. As you can see here, I have some selfies. I have some pictures of myself with different sites and views, all the different kinds of images. And in my case, I will have 23 images to train the model on. And the general idea is the more images you have, the better it is. One important thing is that you have to have the same trigger name in all the pictures. So in my case, I went with Max TRNG, stands for training, Max training for all the pictures. And basically this will make the model understand that those pictures are pictures of the same person and all the pictures. And next time I will be prompting the model to make a picture myself, I will be using exactly the same trigger word. So make sure you have all your photos prepared and they suggest we go with at least 12 photos. We should generally go with a better quality pictures, about 1000 pixels, and we should use the captions for those pictures being a trigger board. So once you have it, you would just go and zip all the pictures into one document. It will go to compress to a zip file. I have it compressed already. So I'll just go and upload a zip file here. And then we go with a trigger face. And in my case, the trigger face is max tier and G. And then we can have additional settings. So the learning rate, if you know nothing about those parameters, you should probably leave them unchanged. The general idea here is the more steps you would get, uh, the probably the better quality you will get, but it will take more time. It will be more expensive. Um, I will leave all those as a default settings. Click start and see how the training goes. OK, all right. So we can see logs. So the training has started. That's my uh, previous training that I've tested before recording this video. And now we can actually watch for a new training in each training result will basically be a LoRa, a specific LoRa on top of the Flux LoRa model. So what is LoRa? Well, LoRa stands for low rank adaption. Essentially, in simple words, this is sort of a filter on top of your model. So this particular filter will actually remember your face and how you look just because you have uploaded, you know, a lot of photos of yourself. So we will use the same model that we would use for any other image generation, which would be Flux One Dev. But instead of just using the model with random guys and random people in the image, we will add this filter on it, which will re remember our face. And that way, you know, we can generate the pictures of ourselves because the model we are using is basically the same. And LoRa is used for like fine tuning purposes on images uh, in particular. Let's actually see how that works. And then we got uh, about 20 percent completion. And let's actually wait until we got 100 percent. All right. And we are at 100 percent. So the training has been finished. I just forgot to mention that it's actually not free to train this model. So if you ever want to use this model, you train it once and you can use it multiple times. It will be it will actually cost money. I think right now for each image, I'm paying something like three cents. But in order to train a model, 
it's actually costed me six dollars if you train flux laura portrait training model it will be about six bucks and if you're training flux laura model it will be about four bucks and then you're paying basically for each generation a few cents and you can actually see the estimate right here so it's not actually cheap but it's much cheaper if any service that you're actually using somewhere else or a third party and if you're using to generate pictures of yourself on a frequent basis like myself because i would need for example youtube thumbnails then it's actually a must have to use this service right so let's actually see how that works we click on running um run inference and here basically what we are seeing is a very simple user interface where we set our prompt this is our path and this will be our laura that we're putting on it this is the scale and i'll talk a bit about this a little bit later and here we have a few other parameters so in order to write a prompt let's actually ask an ai to write a prompt for us i'll go to chat.com and i will ask ChatGPT create a prompt for image generation that starts with max trng mal and the reason i go with mail because sometimes um it didn't happen to me because i was always using this uh, in the very beginning but sometimes for some other um you know people that were doing this before it just tended to generate a female <laughs> So that's that's weird, but it shouldn't. But um, that would actually happen. So that's why I will always start with male just to avoid any problems with the gender. OK, so it goes with the male character, futuristic, uh, cybernetic appearance, blah, blah, blah. Fine. Let's actually try this out and we will try this as a default, not changing any settings. And let's actually see what the result we will get out of just recently trained model. All right. So here we go. OK, so we have a futuristic man. Actually, it looks like me a little bit more muscular than uh, I am. But uh, I mean, the face actually looks uh, quite, quite good. Uh, what we should important. So this model tend to be made for portraits mainly. So we actually should be aiming for portrait portrait prompts, not sort of sort of general ones. Ha however, this is actually good enough. So let me uh, quickly explain what these kind of things mean. So scale and you can read it here is basically show how much weight we are giving to Laura. In here, for whatever reason, they have it open until five or actually four. You should never use four. I mean, if you go to sort of 1.5, I'll show you what the output is going to be. And for to compare the output, we're probably going to choose a, the same seat. And the seat is basic. Think about it as a random image. But if you would want to repeat this image, um, you would need to use um, the same seat. So, yeah. And if you see here, the output is horrible i mean it's 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 there's something wrong with my face definitely right so on one hand we're saying hey you should rely on those images and make it look more like i do but then the quality goes completely off so my actually ideal scale that i've chosen from the trial and error was 1.1 and if we want to compare what 1.5 to 1.1 actually looks this is what it looks with 1.1 okay so this is what it looks with 1.1 and this actually looks like me i mean um the color of my hair is a little bit different um probably maybe that was in a prompt i'm not sure but it actually looks like me and much more like me so i i, I would usually go with 1.1 and that's my ideal that i found so for the image size you can actually choose if uh, was the ratio of the of your image i'll just leave it as default the number of inference steps we probably should aim for the highest possible because the more steps we have the better quality we will get so let's see how the same image would look with 50 steps okay so if you look at this image actually adds a little bit more detail i i, I haven't uh, i have closed the previous one and i'm not going to open it again but it actually added a little bit more details to the image so if we really want to go with kind of a little bit more quality but the uh, lower time generation i would usually go with 50 steps and actually the time for creation is about four seconds so it's still quite okay the next one is the seed and the seed is basically a random image if we erase it it all the time will choose a random seed and we will get a different image here so it's not going to be the kind of the same concept of the image although the prompt is pretty specific but we'll get sort of a different look right so now we have uh, those ice uh, burning or, or whatever so that's that's a different seed so if you want to play with the settings and compare the settings you should be choosing a single seed that's that's what i'm saying so the guidance scale is basically showing how much you should rely on your prompt and the higher parameter would mean that we should try to incorporate all the details that are in the prompt the lower parameter would mean we would rely less on it and the default is 3.5 default is fine sometimes where you have like a more detailed prompt you can probably shoot for higher but for my most cases like even 3.5 was totally enough so sync mode we don't need this one number of images if you want to create more than one image at a time then you would shoot for two and the safety checker and the safety checker can be disabled only through the api not through this uh, playground and the safety checker is basically will it allow to show not safe for work uh, content or not so 
yeah, this is how it looks. And uh, I would probably try to ask my GPT to generate some kind of office environment picture to generate a prompt for a professional in a working environment, right? So something something that I potentially can use either for a thumbnail or for my social media. And we should always start with this one. Okay, it has uh, forgot this uh, instruction, but we will use it ourselves. So let's actually do this. So a max and G, a male professional man or a professional man is actually fine. So we do 50 steps, 1.1, that's my ideal, and we just run it. And let's actually see how that uh, looks. Uh, and we can also go with four images to see if uh, that we get any better outputs here. Okay, so that's how it looks. I mean, looking quite good and actually okay. I mean, uh, yeah, can't say uh, anything. I mean, it, that, that's okay. That's not the best picture I've seen, but uh, that's okay. There is, if we look a little bit closer, there is probably eyes are sort of questionable, but I don't know. Like uh, when I look like this, it's actually fine. I don't know. Um, maybe that's okay. In, and in that way, you can pretty much ask, you know, ChatGPT to create like, uh, let, let's do 10, 10 professional prompts or something like this and just play with it and get the images of yourself straight here. So for me, it actually costs about um, how much? It's about four or three um, cents per, per image. So I can generate about 30 images for one dollar. And that would be cool, pretty cool, right? So if you would need more images in a specific environment, you don't need the setup, you don't need the lights, you don't need the camera. You just need the photos of yourself uh, back in the days so that, you, so that you can train a model. And that's pretty cool. However, sometimes it might actually be quite inconvenient to all the time go to this website and try to prompt in here. So instead, we can create a system because they have API integrations that you can grab and basically put this model whenever you want. So here, I've created a simple scenario that I will take this model to Slack and I will prompt something in Slack. The AI model will generate sort of 10 more sophisticated prompts of this. And then basically I will send these prompts to that model and get them back in Slack. And let me show you how that works. So we go to Slack and we say, generate me 10 prompts of a professional uh, in a working environment. Because I want, I might want to use these pictures later on for my thumbnails or social media. So generate me 10 prompts of professional in a working environment. Here it will usually wait for like 15 minutes or less until it runs so that we don't wait. I'll just run it. OK, so the scenario is already running and let's get back to actually to our Slack. And here we get the output. And those are the pictures that I've generated previously. And these are the ones that are coming up right now from our new trained and fine tuned model. So that's the first image that we get in Slack. It's actually look exactly like me. It's even the phone uh, look like the one I have with the black case that I have. Very professional. I mean, um, very nice. Um, here's another one uh, with the with the crowd or something. I mean, the picture is amazing. Oh my God, this is so good. Uh, it literally looked like my face. Uh, I hope I would never ever would told this is not my face. I mean, the crowd, maybe the crowd is a little bit weird because uh, if you look a little bit closer, you can see that there are many, uh, you know, myself, actually, many Maxims are sitting down there. It's actually at least, you know, it looks from the blurry image, but this guy is amazing. It exactly looks like me. So let's uh, let's take a look at another one. OK, so this one, not the best one. And sometimes you will get these. Um, not all of them will be perfect, but let's actually take another one. So this one is very, very nice. It's actually have more beards that I do have right now and that I usually wear. But, you know, if I don't shave for a week or so, that's probably how I'm going to look. So that's that's fine. I mean, the visual is, is exactly like this. And that's the funny guy when it generates people on the back. Those actually people look like me and look at all those people. You can find patterns of my face just because the model have actually remembered my face. So, right. So generating, you know, faces of other people on the back is not the best idea. That's that's what I'm saying. OK, so I have even um, even with the sign master and G chain. I mean, fine. Look a little bit older, not like uh, tired or what? Like uh, I was, uh, I don't know, uh, looks like this. Oh, and the, fi the, the, the final one. OK, so I'm a painter or something. Uh, not really a professional setup, but uh, but still quite, quite good. Uh, I mean, the face uh, actually looks similar to me, but not exactly like me. So we've got how many? One, two, three, four, five, six pictures yet. Um, let's see if we if we get more. No, we won't get more just because uh, oh, we have an error here. There was an error. It actually stopped. So there there must be uh, probably a block that will just, you know, skip an error and it will run further just because of one image. There does something happen and just stop the whole thing. And we got just seven image. But I think uh, generally that was actually pretty, pretty good.
I mean, this picture is like my my top top like super nice. I think um, I, I think I'm not gonna run it again just just to show you another ten images of myself. I think you got the idea, and you can literally train it yourself. It took me like you know five minutes to train the model and be ready to generate pictures of myself. And I don't need to use any third parties. And it literally cost me like three cents to generate an image of myself. So here I generated about uh, seven images, so it's about twenty cents. And you can actually check your account here. Oh, and by the way, the way I actually did it. So if you go here, so here it's very simple. We'll look at the Slack um, input channel, which is right here. So it takes um, this prompt that I'll write in specifically in the Slack channel that it was created for it. And then we have our ChatGPT agent. And essentially what it's going to do is um, let me actually show you. So I have decreased a little bit the temperature so that to make sure it doesn't go totally off uh, with its creation. But um, let me show you the prompts. And it's actually very simple. You can be more explicit on the prompting here. But my general idea was to make it quick to show you guys how it works. So that's basically our prompt engineer that will create prompts for our images. And he's saying you're an image prompt generator for box model. You need to come up with prompts for portrait images. And that's actually important. So your prompts should always start with this keyword, which is fine. And then we have the output text would be in JSON format. And this is needed for the model to work so that we can take those prompts separately. And then what we have next is basically called a few shot prompting. But we have a user saying, hey, I need a prompt for tech enthusiast. And this is what the model should provide. So the male tech uh, expert close up portrait, blah, blah, blah. Then there is another user query professional photo. And then there is another answer from assistant. And here goes our own prompt that we specified in Slack. Um, for sure, we have to select the response format to be JSON object and process JSON so that we can use this uh, response later on. So as we can see, we've got 10 prompts here. Then we get another module, which is basically creating. So what it does, it converts this results to array uh, with the name prompts. And once we got the array, we use the iterator here so that we can split those key value pairs and use later on as a specific run or operation for our Flux model. So basically, each prompt will go to your Flux. And here you can see, so we've got the HTTP request to our Flux. Um, that's the um, API key I have that I will need to probably erase after uh, this video, which is fine. And then we got basically the prompt. And the prompt is the one that generated by ChatGPT agent right here that we have run through the tools and iterator module. And then are the settings. So we set what is the width of the picture, what is the height, what is the number of inference steps. And I went for 50 that I suggested you before. We've got the guidance scale. And the guidance scale is how much of a prompt guidance we are supposed to be using, like here, right? So the guidance scale is set to four. Then we got the enable safety checker. So if the image is uncensored, then um, it's not going to pass. In my case, I set it to false. Then we got output format to be in a PNG format. And then we get LORAS. And LORAS is basically our um, LORA that we've just created. We should copy paste that inside here and here we should choose the scale of LoRa. So as I said, by just trial and error, I found that 1.1 works best for me and I suggest doing this for you as well. So that's where we where you set those settings. And again, I'm using a different seed here. That's uh, not really important because we have different prompts. So you can leave those blank as well. And the sync mode is set to false. So those are the restrictions that we are passing to our full AI. It actually runs the model. Then we wait for like 10 seconds because the generation is an average four to six seconds. And then we basically get back the response. And if we look any other operation, we got the image back. And if you just go and take this URL and open that image, you will get the image that we have seen here in our Slack channel. All right. And then the last one is basically sending this message through a Slack. And you can also include the prompt if you want. I just made it very easy. Just put whatever image is there in the Slack so that you can use it later on and download them. You know, go and download the image, save image as you wish and use it for your own pet. So to recap, today we explored how AI can take your personal photos to the next level. We fine-tuned the cutting-edge AI model using our own photos, enabling it to create consistent, high-quality images of ourselves in any setup we choose. And if that was not exciting enough, we also learned how to integrate this into Slack for effortless, no-code image generation at scale. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really supports the channel. And if you're excited about the future of AI and creativity, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. That really, really helps. Want to dive deeper to fine tuning? Check out my video on how to easily make AI write like you, where we fine tune ChatGPT on text. Do you think it is okay to post AI generated photos on social media or not? Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.